Over the years, many tales have been told about locomotives and their railways. Stories ranging from the Big Four, British Railways, the Modernization Plan, and even the Beaching Acts. As time goes on, they are told by generations both young and old. But my stories have never been told until now. For these are my Steam Railway stories. A few miles down the line, just before the town of Cranford, the tracks run alongside the road which then meets up at a small level crossing outside the station. Once road vehicles have crossed, they then either carry on into the town or turn right into the station car park if they want to travel on the trains. One day, Dom was puffing happily along the line. As he approached the crossing, he saw a group of people waiting by the gates. Hello. Ow! Oh, the group ow! Didn't oh. wait or take his picture. They instead threw stones at him, much to the Hunslet's bewilderment. At Wooten Halt, Dom's crew checked him over. He wasn't hurt, nor did he have any serious damage. But his paintwork was scratched up by the flying stones. Hello, Dom. What's the matter? I got attacked, Pav. Attacked? By who? By a group of people at the level crossing near Cranford. Hmm. Did this group have a red lorry with them? Yes, I believe they did. Why? <sighs> so, they're still looking about, are they? Who's still looking about? And I thought they had finally... Pavan, who are you talking about? Oh, sorry, Dom. <clears throat> It seems the group you encountered was none other than the Anti-Railway Gang. Anti-Railway Gang? Long before you arrived, the line originally ran up to Eversley, as the railway's original main purpose was to bring coal from the colliery to Apple Green Junction, where a mainline engine would take it further on. Then, in the 1950s, plans to extend the line to Castle Croft to transport goods and passengers were put into action as the quality of the roads proved to be very poor at the time. However, some locals didn't take too kindly to this and got together to form what many would call a hate group or an aggressive business rival. The anti-railway gang was the result. On many occasions they tried many ways to take back what they claimed was rightfully theirs, but to no avail. What kind of ways? Scheming type methods you'd expect from business rivals like false advertising, vandalism, and a lot of sabotage. Blimey! I know races and competitions have their bad losers, but these guys are just... incredibly violent. Makes the rivalry between Stanier and Gresley look like child's play. You're right there, Dom. And I've got a feeling that this is only going to get worse. This is ridiculous! These morons just never seem to give up! My passenger train was cancelled the other day, as the coaches were being cleaned thanks to them being spray-painted! They threw stones at me the other day. I've only just had the scratches painted over. Still... I'm just glad my crew and guard weren't hurt. Well, even if they did, it wouldn't have been enough for that gang to realise they have gone too far. If they keep up with their assaults, someone is going to get hurt. The engines agreed that something must be done. But try as they might, none of them could come up with a plan. The next morning, the anti-railway gang were once again up to no good. This time, they have parked their lorry right across the level crossing, with the intention of holding up and delaying the next train. 
And once the train arrives, it won't be able to get past, and it will be late. Indeed. It will serve them right for extending their oh-so-precious line and taking away good work from us. Uh, are you sure this is all about, guys? I mean, what if the next train that comes has covers on board? Oh, don't be so stupid, Roger! Since when do police ride on trains? Hold up, Neat. I think I can hear it coming. The police? No! A train, you twit! And he was right. Unfortunately for him, it was Don, and was still thinking about the gang and how to put an end to their schemes. There just has to be a way to stop that no good gang. There just has to be. It can't go on like this and- Driver! There's a lorry on the tracks! Oh glory, there is too! Don't worry lads, he'll stop. They always stop. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's slowing down. Oh, good lord, you're right. He's not stopping. Move. Where are you going? Get back here, you cowards! Look out! When Dom opened his eyes, he found a broken crossing gate stuck to his buffers and a wrecked lorry laying in the bushes. Soon, the emergency services had arrived, along with Mr. Harris. I know it's a stupid question, Dom, but are you alright? Ugh, I've been better, sir. But what on earth happened? The anti-railway gang parked their lorry across the line with the aim of delaying your train, and you ended up crashing into it. They what? Oh, for the love of all things powered by coal and water, didn't they realise that someone could have gotten hurt? Or worse? Uh, about that, Dom. What is it, sir? When Mr. Harris explained, Dom's anger quickly turned to shock. Luckily, his crew weren't too badly hurt, and the gang members had also escaped unharmed. But their leader wasn't so lucky. According to Dom's crew and the members, he was still standing on the lorry when Dom collided with it, and the force of the crash had sent him flying onto the line side. A week later, after the police had finished their investigation, the anti-railway gang mysteriously disappeared and wasn't seen again. Dom is sure that wherever they are now, the gang members have learned that actions have consequences and had finally decided to leave him and his friends alone to carry on as normal. I wonder if Dom is right. Don't you?